am Jane Monzuris, and this is Creative Living, where we help you live your most creative life. Today, we're at Mother Nature's farm getting inspiration for Thanksgiving. But first, here's what's coming up on the show. You don't have to spend the holidays alone. A new dating website makes it easier and safer to meet the perfect match. I'll show you a Thanksgiving tablescape that will have your guests ooing and eyeing. And planes, trains, and automobiles. Packing tips so your trip is not a nightmare. That and so much more on this episode of Creative Living. here at Mother Nature's farm and I am with the owner Wade. Now Wade, I think a trip to the farm with the family for the holidays is a great way to spend time together. So what can families do when they visit the farm? When Sid folk come out to the farm, they get to go on a hayride, see the animals, pet the animals, play in the playhouses, go on the spider web crawl, run up and down the great big hill at the farm. Lots of things to do here at Mother Nature's farm. So there are farms like this all over the country. So why is it important for family and friends to visit those farms? Yeah, agritainment is exploding all over the nation right now, and it's really helping the family farms stay alive. Most family farms are always looking for some other in income, and it's really helping that people are coming out to the farm, and it's helping that people experience the farm life. Yeah, absolutely. And when families get out, out of the city and, and out of their neighborhoods to really experience Mother Nature, and not only here, but nationally across the country. There's lots of places throughout the country that are counting on people and helping them out, come out and pick their apples, pick their pumpkins. Always a great backdrop too, mind you, for photos. Yeah, there's lots of photo opportunities at the farm. Great selfie opportunities. Absolutely. <laughs> what kind of feedback and reaction do you get from kids and family that explore the farm for the first time? Well, when they come out to the farm, they realize that not everything is paved in asphalt. And it's kind of nice to run around in the grass and see the animals and where their food comes from. Yeah, really great to get out into nature and spend some time in the fresh air with the live animals and really getting, getting back to, to our roots. Getting back to where everything starts. I love that. Thank you so much, Wade. What a beautiful farm. I can't wait to explore. And thank you for having us here. Thanks for coming out. So you've checked out all those other dating websites and all you've met is Mr. Wrong. The guy claims to look like Brad Pitt. Yeah, right, if you're squinting in a dark room. Well, you gotta check out Helen Meets Troy. It's a dating website that makes it easier and safer to meet Mr. or Mrs. Wright. Hi, I'm Biddings Bent. I'm the CEO and founder of HelenMeetsTroy.com. Helen Meets Troy is the only dating site and only thing in existence that can learn who you find visually attractive as well as internally attractive. And getting along with somebody, finding somebody visually attractive, it matters. So being the only website that can do that makes it the future of online dating. I'm Stephanie Bent and I'm the wife of the founder and CEO of Hella Meets Troy. You know, he had already started Hella Meets Troy before we met, but after we did meet, he even said to me one time, it makes me so angry that I could have missed you, that I, you are so perfect for me, I could have missed you. I have to make this website better than all of the rest of them so people can find someone for themselves. There's a lot of science behind it. We have invented a technology that learns what you find visually attractive or unattractive about a human face uh, just by thumbs upping or thumbs downing pictures. The computer can take your basic thumbs up and thumbs down and look at the image and start extrapolating what matters to you about that image and then look through the millions of other possible potential matches and bring them to the front of your list. So we can match you on personality and then take all those personality matches and then match you also by who you'd want to wake up to every morning. We, we are matches on, <laughs> on Helmy's Troy, yes. Now, it's, it was like 96%, so I'm curious about There's that. There's room before. for improvement. Yeah. <laughs> There's, <laughs> There's room for improvement, but definitely. I've sent people to the site, and when I tell them about our features, on how we organize the emails so you don't get a lot of the fluff you don't want or the thing about video chatting with somebody and it's 
on site so you don't have to give out your personal information. You don't have to give out your personal number or your Skype name and it's all in house so you can keep yourself secure before you actually find out who that person is. They love it. They're like, yes, awesome, I'm on there. Our goal in putting this, this whole project together was to make a dating site so successful that we don't have people sitting on it for a long time and we don't have repeat customers. You can't just rely on meeting people in person or at a bar or, you know, at a bookstore or, you know, supermarket. Dating sites do help. They could help better. So that's where we came in. The fact that we can make an engine that can help you find what we have together, that's awesome. Interesting fact, the first Thanksgiving dinner was served in 1621, but turkey wasn't served. Historians say it was most likely duck or goose. Here's what's coming up on Creative Living. Looking for a creative and inspirational way to decorate your holiday table? I'll show you how to make a chalkboard table runner. And if you want a cool place to visit with your family, we check out an ostrich farm. turkey stuffing and all the football games, Thanksgiving is a time for expressing gratitude. So why not turn your already spectacular table into a new tradition for the treasured people in your life by creating this easy DIY chalkboard table runner. Let's get started. You'll need blackboard fabric. You can get this at any fabric store or online. Burlap ribbon, Kai pinking shears or regular scissors, chalk, and a soft cloth. Blackboard fabric is used just like a chalkboard, so it's perfect for this creative table runner to say thanks this Thanksgiving. First, to prep the fabric, the surface must be primed. To prime the fabric, rub the side of a piece of chalk over the entire surface, from top to bottom and side to side. Use a soft cloth to wipe off the chalk and repeat the process. If your fabric is wrinkled, you can use the wool setting on your iron and a dry press cloth and press from the wrong side to remove the creases. Next, measure the table you want to cover to decide on the size of your runner. You can use your pinking shears to give the edges of the fabric a soft texture, or you can cut it straight and sew or glue a burlap edging onto the edge to give it a rustic feel. To finish, set your table with your finest tableware and be sure to give everyone their own piece of chalk at their table setting so they can write what they're thankful for before dinner is served. And there you have it, a meaningful table runner for your Thanksgiving. Job well done. You've got a lot to be thankful for. Most of us remember drawings of pilgrims wearing cone-shaped hats with gold buckles. Well, that's a myth. Most pilgrims were too poor to afford gold, so they usually just wore plain felt hats. If you're looking for a cool hat, check out this craft room crash and learn how to make a fashionable fedora. This is Craft Room Crash, and I'm outside DIYer Laura Hupka's house. Now, she's a couture milliner. Yeah, she makes hats, and she says she lets the materials speak to her when considering what type of hat to make. So, let's go crash her craft room and find out what they're talking about today. Hey, Jane. Hey, Laura. Come on in. All right. Craft room? It's fabulous. 
fabulous. Thanks. My name is Laura Hupka, and I'm a couture milliner. I make women's hats. Milliners are hoarders with really beautiful hoards. So there's fabrics, there's buttons, there's everything. I don't know what I would do if I wasn't a hat maker. My hands are always in motion. And are these all the hats that you're making? Look at this. This is are. so Kate. Thank you. It's just a really elegant way to show confidence and to get attention. Have you been called by the royalty in Kensington Palace no. to make any of their hats? My phone is on. I'm, yeah. I'm waiting. <laughs> they say it takes 10,000 hours to be a master of your craft. And by my estimation, I've surpassed 10,000 hours, and I still think I learn something new every day. So we are going to make a fedora today. So we're going to kind of walk you through the steps of it. So first, we're going to select our material. Can't I just wear the hat like this? Um, if you look at Marc Jacobs, you can. Next, we are going to heat it and steam it, and we're going to shape it over the hat block. Yeah, it's stretching over the top. Yep, so take your hands and kind of mold it up here. We're going to get it tight down here, and then we're going to kind of cinch a cord on here like it's I almost see. like a belt. So before we put this next cord on, we're going to use that to kind of draw in where the crown meets the brim. Ready? So this one goes around yep, here. that one yep. goes around. You got it. Yes, perfect. This is awesome. Right? She's doing it. She's doing it. All right, now we need one more cord. That's so, it. So that's you just it. just blocked a hat, Jane. So we took this off the mold so it's ready to get its wires. You feel how it wants to go in? Uh, yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. I'm gonna let you do it. So I take it small sections at a time. Using regular pins. Yep, no wonder clips this time, sadly. So we're gonna go slow. So you never do the back stitch at the beginning, you just go with it. Just go with it. So this is what the inside of the hat, this is done. This is done? This is a finished hat. This May I? A, oh, yes. Oh, Jen. How does it look? It's gorgeous on you. Let's see. How does it look? Thanks to Laura, now we all know how to make a classic fedora. And that's what Laura is making in her craft room. What are you making in your craft room? I'll see you later. It's just amazing. Oh, just gorgeous on you. Did you know Thanksgiving is the reason for TV dinners? In 1953, Swanson had so many turkeys left over, a salesman recommended packaging the meat along with Thanksgiving sides in an aluminum tray. And that's how it all started. All right, here's what's coming up next on Creative Living. If you want to showcase your turkey dinner, check out my festive tablescape ideas. And before you pack up for that holiday adventure, be sure you take notes on these packing tips. time you want to cram everything from your closet into your suitcase but you don't have to here's some great packing tips from our organizing expert hi I'm Andrea Brandage with Simple Organized Solutions today I'm going to be sharing with you some travel tips traveling and packing for a trip can be very stressful for many of us and I'm going to share some tips that will hopefully make your next trip just so much more fun and a lot less stressful First thing you want to do is have a packing list. Everything that you need should be on this list. You're going to mark it off as you go. These travel cubes are marvelous and what we use those for for separating seasonal clothes. Separating your shoes and placing them in one of these uh, travel pouches is a great way to make sure that your clothes stay clean. You're going to want to use basic colors and I particularly like to use black as my base color. Go ahead and put those in there and find some nice clothes that don't wrinkle easily to mix and match with. Another uh, thing that I like to share is a makeup bag that actually has a hanger on it. This is wonderful when you're staying in hotels. Very handy. You can see through the case. It will hold jewelry or makeup or a combination of both. You're definitely going to want to have a file folder. Make sure it's a fun one so you can spot it in your briefcase or your purse or your backpack. In here, you're going to want to have your itinerary, also carry your passport, just handy ways so that you're not stressed out. Additionally, how many of you get to your destination and you've forgotten your chargers? This little pouch is wonderful for carrying your chargers. I actually carry this in my purse 
so that when I get to my destination, I'm not fumbling around in a suitcase trying to find them. Jewelry and valuables uh, should also be carried with you rather than in your suitcase if you're uh, flying. This is a favorite of mine. This is a blow-up pillow. Gosh, you know, you get tired, you get jet lagged. It's nice to have a blow-up pillow that you can actually let the air out and hold in your purse or backpack. Here's a handy little strip strap that you can put on your luggage. Not only does it keep it secure, but when it's going around that turnstile, it certainly stands out that that one belongs to you. If you're going to a fancy event, you may want to take a little clutch. Remember, these items that we're talking about can actually hold some things for you. So in fact, you could put this little clock and flashlight in there so you actually are getting more space than it seems like you have. I hope these tips have been helpful for you. Happy traveling. If you have family in town for the holidays, you've got to check out the Rooster Cogburn Ostrich Ranch. The name Rooster Cogburn Ostrich Ranch. John Wayne made the name famous with, back in the old days with the Rooster Cogburn movie and the True Grit movie. The character John Wayne played, Rooster Cogburn, is a real federal marshal and he is my great, great, great uncle. John Wayne just made the name famous, but we are the real Cogburns. This is definitely not something you're gonna find on every street corner. I don't know where else you can uh, get pooped on by rainbow lorikeets. <laughs> Slobbered on by goats. There we go. <laughs> nibbled on by miniature donkeys. Feed the bunnies where they nibble on you. <laughs> Of course, ostrich feeding, you gotta get bit by an ostrich because let's face it, that's the best story ever. Get stingrays to suck food right out of your hand and then close it all up with a monster truck tour. One, two, three! Yeah. So, it's not what you find on your normal street corner, that's for sure. Now we've become known as one of the top 10 roadside attractions in America. Larry, the cable guy, came out and filmed with us, lots of different celebrities. So it's really been a fun thing and a good thing for Arizona. On a balls, trace, go! We feel like we are spreading joy. It's a fun place for all ages. Adults come here thinking they're bringing their kids, and then the adults all turn into kids. Everyone gets to come here, and for just a little bit of time, they get to forget their problems. And that's what it's about. We get lots of different languages. And I can tell you one thing, when you're dealing with animals, this the compassion that comes out in people, and it just brings something special out in people. That is a universal language. You don't have to speak the same language. You get it. And I, I love that. Isn't that place just great? It's interesting spots like the ostrich farm that create great family moments. So be sure to find an unusual place in your area to visit for some family fun. When we come back, some great ideas to spruce up your Thanksgiving table. You're already gonna wow your guests with the Thanksgiving feast, but make an even bigger impression with your tablescape. I've got some great upcrafting ideas on how to make over your Thanksgiving table using supplies you already have at home. So first, let's start with the chairs. Now, how can you update your furniture without buying an entire new table set? Well, just recover the chairs using old fabric scraps. You can glue or stitch them together in an interesting pattern and blend of colors and there you have it, a crazy quilt chair cover. And the best part, this fun decorating tip can change by season. Okay, let's talk about the table covering. 
To start, we're going to make a chalkboard table runner. So you're going to measure the table to decide on the size of your table runner and then sew on burlap edging to give it a rustic feel. And because we're using a blackboard fabric, give everyone a piece of chalk so they can write what they're thankful for. Now also at every place setting, create a pine cone place card holder. Now it's fun to harvest pine cones this time of year, so just add a dab of paint to the edges and print your guests' names on cards and slip them into the pine cones. Now napkin rings are traditionally made of silver, wood, we've seen them in porcelain and glass. But today, you're gonna make them with glue and they look just as fabulous. Using a silicone candy mold, fill it with hot glue and a piece of twine. And once it's dry, paint it any color you like and you can wrap up your napkins. Now the trend this year for centerpieces is simple and easy. So just add a few small pumpkins to a cylinder vase and it gives your table some height and a fall festive flair. Now to go along with our fall table, make home decor by repurposing those empty pickle, peanut butter, and pasta sauce jars. All you're gonna do is paint the glass jars, wrap a piece of burlap ribbon around each of them, and then using a stencil, you can write anything you want on the ribbon. Now let's continue this pilgrimage. These Indian corn candy treat bags are so easy. You're gonna fill up a pastry bag with any candy you like, wrap up the end with straw, and not only do they look stunning, but they make great party favors too. Okay, here's a craft for the kids. We all need hot pads when we're cooking a Thanksgiving dinner. So get the kids involved, have them play with some paint, and then use their handprints to create turkey images on your hot pads. Just another way to create memories in the kitchen. And finally, you can change out your wall art every season when you create canvas art using stencils and a little love. And there you have it, a table full of Thanksgiving DIY ideas. You've got a lot to be thankful for. We want to thank Wade and everyone here at Mother Nature's Farm for having us out here today. Here's a few Thanksgiving hacks to help you out this holiday. Don't waste time basting your turkey. It doesn't really get moist. Instead, put pats of room temperature butter under the skin and on top. Also, don't bother setting up an elaborate bar. Offer a few soft drinks and make a punch that people can add vodka to if they want. Finally, not everyone loves to watch football, so make sure you have board games for people to play or even jigsaw puzzles. Thanks so much for joining us right here on Creative Living. I'm Jane Monzuris, and I'll see you next time.